Hey, what's up, everybody? Today we're continuing to talk about my documentary, and today's topic is my interview setup, my main interview setup that we did with two cameras, center framed, straight to camera for camera A, and it turned out better than I expected, and I, it turned out way better than I hoped for. The location was incredible, but I got a lot of questions about how I pulled it off, how we dealt with sound in that space, so today I'm gonna just break down that whole interview. Hopefully it won't be too long. Hopefully you get a lot of value from it. Like this video, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, let's do this. Okay, so as I was preparing for this interview, I knew that I wanted my subject to talking directly to the camera. That's the style I wanted. I just wanted that like intimate feel of them talking to the camera, but they're not a professional you know, actor or anything, so they're not used to talking to a camera, so I needed a way to kind of trick them into looking directly into the lens the entire interview, and this interview ended up being like an hour and a half. I knew we had to get a little creative in how we did that. So I did a lot of research, and the best way to do that that we found was to use a teleprompter with an iPad so that we used FaceTime and we had my wife who is our producer she was the one interviewing so she was off to the side on on her phone uh, we had it on a stand and so she could talk directly into the camera and then he could look into the teleprompter with the iPad and it, they were like having a conversation but he was looking directly into the lens so it worked out pretty cool and the second thing is I knew I wanted a second camera, camera B, to be center framed as well. I just didn't know with having a teleprompter on camera A if we were going to be able to get camera B at like not an odd angle set directly center frame. I thought we would have to be a little bit off. I tried to find a bunch of reference images to kind of see how other people had done it and I didn't find anything actually useful so we kind of just winged it and when we got there that part actually turned out like perfectly. I was just planning on putting it to like a traditional B cam side angle type of a thing but it worked out perfectly where I had it exactly exactly center frame right underneath camera A and right underneath the teleprompter and it was a wide enough shot uh, I believe we used a 28 millimeter Canon FD for uh, camera B and we used um, the Canon FD 50 mil for camera A so the the wider angle was able to sit directly under that under that iPad and it it captured it perfectly. It didn't have to reframe anything in post. It would just worked out amazing. So now I'm gonna walk through some of the behind the scenes photos and we'll just talk about the whole setup and break it down. All right, so like I was saying, we have right here, we have the, the teleprompter here uh, with the iPad camera A. This is the Black Magic Pocket uh, 6K Pro and our B cam was the Pocket 4K. Uh, with a speed booster so as close to full frame as we could get for that and that was on the 28 mil the uh, a cam was on the 50 mil and then right over here is where we had uh, my wife with the with her iphone on facetime off the camera behind the negative fill so she's not being distracting so he's not tempted to look at her we wanted him to look straight into the camera the whole time so this worked out the negative fill there's like we have a floppy here and then we have some uh we have some fabric here that we had pinned up along the side because we have some huge windows all along both sides of this auditorium. So we used uh, the negative fill to give a lot of contrast to his face. But then it also helped with sound as well. It's a huge echoey space, so that helped a lot with that. Um, but then it also blocked the, inter the interviewer um, from his side. So it was, just a, it was just a great use of negative fill. Then we have the sound blanket down here on the ground to help with some of the echo. I believe the sound turned out super great with that sound blanket, negative fill, and then we just had a high quality mic, the Sennheiser 416. Um, it's just a fantastic mic. We just got that as close as we could. Couldn't get it as close as I wanted just because we were using that 28 mil for B cam, so, but it turned out great. All right, now here's another angle that shows our key light. We use kind of like a really simple book light setup. This is a just, this C stand actually has this attachment right here that allows you to put the light 
And then my friend who was gaffing for this project has this really cool floppy that has a built-in diffusion with an ultra bounce right here. And then it's this nice silk to bounce through. And I think it turned out really great. It's just, just a super interesting tool that I never used before, but um, pretty, I'm pretty happy with the results from it. And here's just a closer look at how the cameras were set up here with the, uh, the teleprompter. And then we had this B cam was literally just out of frame on the A cam, just clean, just cleared it. And I uh, like, I literally didn't think that was going to work. I didn't think that was going to happen. Um, I just didn't think, were, think there was enough clearance without having to get really low and like look up at his face, which is what I didn't want to do. Um, but I'm like super happy with it. And because the B cam is so wide, when we do cut to that in the film, it looks like he's looking into that camera too because they're so close and it's wide. It really sells the effect well. Something else that I want to point out since you'll probably see it here in the photo is we did use the Samsung T5 for recording the media just for these interviews. The rest of the project you see fast cards. I just, because these interviews were so long, I just, just didn't want to have to worry about dumping cards because we went straight into a, a few hours of b-roll right after this interview so I wanted the interviews completely separate um, and not have to worry about space. We also use this wireless transmitter um, I think it's the Axoon uh, transmitter receiver to, that was connected to my friend's iPad so that we could monitor that yeah just an extra way to monitor it so we didn't have to stare at the camera monitors the whole time. Let me go back to the other photo and I'll show you a little bit how we did audio. Alright so you see here we got my this audio cable come in here that splits it's like this this cable that I got that goes to like XLR and it splits to two mini XLRs for the 6K Pro has two channels in so what what I did was I had my audio recorder uh, my friend Josh was running audio and he was monitoring that the whole time on on the recorder that we had the the boom mic going into the recorder and then we had an out as a safety channel going into the camera so we recorded directly into into the recorder and then as the safety backup into the camera. So that saved us actually because it was one moment where we were taking a break and then the subject sat down and just started talking and he literally was just like, we needed that like one sentence that was just like super crucial. And since I had that safety track running to the camera, we got it and we didn't have to have him re-say it. Um, because just the way he said it was just perfect in that moment and that happened sometimes and our audio recorder missed that first like two and a half seconds so that worked out great I love having that safety that backup audio it's a huge lifesaver and here's just a closer look at that book light setup so you can see I'll try to drop in the description what that whole package is with the floppy and the C stand and stuff so if you were interested you could pick that up it's super useful especially in a tight space and with these pews right here we we didn't have the space to do like a full book light setup like I wanted and so this worked out really great when it was in the tight area okay and then here is camera a just a shot from now you can kind of see what that key is doing doing that nice Nice side from here, we were getting more sun from these windows over here. The entire interview just, they were pouring over there. So um, that's why I wanted to key from that side. And then we were getting a lot of spill. You can see here, even on the, on the face here, a little bit of blue that was just coming from the window. And so I kind of like that kick. It just kind of looked like a little, little backlight that played nicely and it was consistent the whole interview. Um, but then this neck fill just did a ton here because it was just kind of like washing out too much um, If we wouldn't have had that neck fill so we actually brought in more um, I didn't mention before but we did just haze the crap out of this room There's just tons of haze that we just kept running the whole most of the interview I think we might have cut it off a little bit because it was getting a little too heavy, but um, Yeah, it just ran like on low behind one of the pews. It just kept going and then our B cam we did get super lucky we got this insane like light streak uh, I wish I could have said that we put this like 
huge like M18 out the window and just blasted it through, but we didn't. Um, just got really lucky, the haze and everything just played perfectly. I don't actually have a picture of this, but we did have, I think it was an Aperture 600X with the spotlight mount. Um, and we just had it basically over here, out of just out of frame and blasting this back wall like blasting just this little kick here. You can see this; these frames are lit a little bit better um, than over here. Um, and that's because we were literally kicking out a light onto that just to kind of add some more depth, more creativity to the background. I think it actually elevated that space. I wish I had a before and after, but I don't. I think that really helped as well. But then as you can tell between these two shots, it looks like he's looking into the camera, but he's not. He's looking into A. It's just incredible. These aren't the exact same shots, obviously. The This is like later on. The lighting did shift a little bit, but I mean, the framing, it just couldn't get any happier with that. Just the deleting lines of these pews, everything was just beautiful. The location was incredible. Hope you gained something from this. Hope I was able to shed some insight in how to get a little creative with your interview with two cams straight to camera. I just love that look. I think it's super, super interesting. It's not for every interview set up, but for this particular interview, I want to just like really like look into the viewer, look into the audience, uh, really feel this one. This is really heavy film. Once it's out, I'll post it here on the channel. It premieres next month as of this current filming of uh, in September of 2023. So yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, like the video. Yeah, that's all I got for you. Peace.